Hey, well, welcome everybody to this webinar um, this afternoon. I'm Jane McLennan. The topic of today's webinar is a refresher of the basics, streamlining the monthly process. So the first thing I want to do is have a quick run through of the paperless workflow or the monthly process. So what happens is, first of all, we need to get our invoices into Farm Focus. And there are five ways we can do that. And I'll be talking about those this afternoon. Now, all these options involve automation, which ensures accuracy, generates rich data and saves you time. So once you've got your invoices into Farm Focus, you need to code your invoices. And Farm Focus has got some efficient tools to ensure that your coding is done as efficiently and as effective as possible. So once your invoices are in Farm Focus and you've coded them, it's time to pay your invoices. And you can do that through the ball payment process in Farm Focus. This process is simple and automated. So now your money has physically come in or out of your bank account. And because you've got bank feed set up, the transactions are automatically going to appear in Farm Focus. Now all you need to do is simply match those transactions. And the final step is completing the coding and filing your GST return. So any remaining bank transactions need to be coded and we make that practice efficient by the use of coding rules. You need to check that that you are balanced, but if you've got bank feed set up, you should automatically be balanced. And then the final step is submitting your GST return to the IRD. And once again, Farm Focus has made that process as simple as possible for you by pre-populating your GST report, which then you can file directly with IRD. So all these steps in this process, in every step, automation is key. To, and this helps ensure accuracy and saves you time. So why at Farm Focus are we all about the invoice? Focusing on the invoices means that one, we can be confident that the invoice is correct because we've already coded and reviewed the invoice before we pay it. We also want to be confident that we have enough money in our account to pay for, or enough funds available to pay for the invoices. And we know that because Farm Focus has a powerful tool called the Daily Bank Balance. And the Daily Bank Balance will alert you if you're going to exceed your overdraft on any certain day in the current month. What it does is it knows what your bank balance is. You've entered all your invoices into Farm Focus. So on a daily basis, Farm Focus can predict your bank balance and will alert you if you're going to exceed your overdraft. Now that puts you in the driver's seat and then you can decide which levers to pull. So what I want to do now is go into the demonstration data and work you through this process. Today I'm going to be using the sheep and beef demo data, but it's just as relevant in the dairy um, demo data. So now we're in the needs action page. Let's have a quick tour of it. On the left here, we've got our invoices and the right, our bank transactions. We've got these clickable headers within Farm Focus. So whenever you click on these, you'll sort by date, by here, or you can sort by other party, reference, amount. And in the bank transactions, you can sort by payment date, other party, reference, particulars, or amount. Whenever you see these icons here in Farm Focus, if you hover over them, it will tell you what they are. So this is where I do a file upload, and here I can add non-financial livestock events. These are all the different tabs or pages within the actuals page. And here is the navigation bar, and this is where I can move myself around the Farm Focus application. Down here is the help button. I can press into here and to help, and that will take me into our help centre. And I can search using keywords, say tax invoice, for our help centre resources and tutorials. 
I can also down here, I can um, get our contact details, our 0800 number. And if I've got a feature request of something I'd like Farm Focus to do maybe in the future, I can add that here. We also have our chat bubble. So if you want to talk directly with somebody within our customer success team, you can just go on in here and have a chat to them. And of course, you can log out here. Now within Farm Focus, you'll notice on the needs action page, if it's greyed out like this, if an invoice is greyed out, it means that invoice has been coded. Whereas if it's white like this one, it hasn't been coded. So let's start the beginning of the monthly process with getting our invoices into Farm Focus. Now there is five ways you can get your invoice into Farm Focus. And the first of those is your connectors. And connectors is a way of getting invoices directly from the supplier into Farm Focus. So I've personally got connectors set up for my farmlands and farm source, which means on a monthly basis, these invoices arrive automatically in my needs action screen, ready for me to code. To set up connectors, all you need to do is go into settings and connectors. And here are the connectors that we've currently got available. So just go into here and follow the process. If you have any trouble um, getting making a connector work, please look at our help center resources or talk to one of our customer success team. But having your connectors set up will save you time and ensure accuracy of your invoices. Now, the next way we can get invoices into Farm Focus is the use of the invoice scanner. And this is probably the main way you're going to get invoices into Farm Focus. At a high level, what happens is you receive an invoice from a supplier in your email account. You then forward that email with the invoice attached to your unique email address, which is at scan to focus. So you're not physically actually scanning anything. Farm Focus then, using a third party provider, extractor, reads the invoice and populates it for you into Farm Focus, ready for you to code. Now, the beauty of this is there is no need to retype any information because all the key information has been automatically populated into Farm Focus for you. But more importantly, you have a PDF copy of the invoice attached that you can refer back to at a later date. And that invoice will live with the transaction forever. So to get an email address, you must first connect to the invoice scanner. And to do that, you go into settings, connectors, and then here, connect to invoice scanner. Follow the process in here. It is a very simple process, but if you've got any, have any trouble um, creating or connecting to the invoice scanner, please contact our customer success team. We want all our clients and farm focus to be connected to the invoice scanner and use this tool. As you'd be aware, there are thousands of different ways an invoice can be produced. Now, Extractor, or the invoice scanner, does its best to read these invoices. And it's, it's good, but it's not perfect. So let's go and have a look. I'm going to go into an invoice here. So if I go into the garage invoice, fill in the gaps, and proceed. So now what I want to do is to see, we'll see, first of all, Extractor here is on the right-hand side and the invoice is on the left. What I want to see is how well Extractor has read the invoice. So what I do is I put my cursor here at the beginning of other party, and if I put it here, what it's telling me over here is where Extractor has read the invoice, read it from. So it's actually picked up the other party really well. Now it tends to read the other party or the um, really well, unless it's the other party name is in a logo and then it finds it hard to read because the logo might look like writing to us but in computer language it's a picture and so the invoice scanner struggles to read it but if that happens usually somewhere else on the invoice is the name of the company and you can train extractor to find the name there now reference i'm going to click on to reference now it's found it it struggled to read the reference, 
but I actually want this to be my reference. So now I'm going to just click and drag there. And that there has become my reference. So that's now I am now training Extractor to read the invoice. So, for example, if I wanted the address here to be my reference, if I clicked into here and dragged across there, now that is my reference. But in this instance, I definitely want the invoice number to my, be my reference, so I click there. Now the invoice date, it's picked up that well, and it usually always picks up your invo invoice date well if it's specified. Now due date, it hasn't picked that up, um, and that is because my due date is actually not anywhere on this invoice. Instead, they're put before the 20th of the following month as my due date. So it can't actually convert that to a date. So in this instance, and this is probably the only time I would recommend that you type into Extractor, because what we're trying to do here is train Extractor to read our invoices next for next time. So next time when I come in, it automatically finds the information I'm looking for. So if I type into here, into the Extractor side, I'm not training Extractor at all. Now I go down here and look, it's actually done a really good job of picking up all this detail here under my lines. If I click here into GST, again, it shows me where my GST is read and it's picked up that well. And my gross total, it's picked that up well as well. So generally speaking, it does pick up these numbers well. Now, if this was my, my actual account, I'd actually be really happy with the way Extractor has read this information. And I would probably just press save. But what I want to demonstrate here is how we can actually train Extractor to read different parts or summaries of um, invoices. So here, if I wanted to, I could add lines or take away lines. So if I press plus here, I'm going to be adding a new line if, if Extractor hadn't picked up all the information I'd wanted it to, or I can delete my lines if I like. But in this instance, I actually want to clear all. This is just saying, yep, do you want to clear all? And I say yes. And now you can see all my lines have been cleared. And what I'm wanting to do is just get the summary information from this invoice um, and tr train Extractor to only get the summary information. So I'm going to grab this information here. And I grab that information. And it pre-populates it into the description here. And then in the line title, all I want is the subtotal here, the summary. I don't want all the detailed information. So I put my cursor there and it's picked up that information. And now I'm ready to save it. I'm happy with what I've collected from this invoice and I'm going to save. And now it's what it's going to do, it's going to take me back to Farm Focus where I can code this invoice as I like. So this um, was a tractor service. So I can just um, go vehicle, tractor, and if I want to, I can uh, change that, but that's come straight through from invoice scanner, so I don't want to change that. And then I save. So I just want to give you a few tips on using um, the invoice scanner or extractor. Now, extractor uses artificial intelligence and is learning from all users and then funnels the learning down to how you like it. So it does take a little bit of time to train and to learn to read the invoices like you want them to be read. But what's actually really important is you're consistent in the way you train Extractor. So you do need to be a little bit patient. It probably will take you three or four times to train Extractor to read a particular invoice in the way that you would like it. Now, please also send invoices rather than statements to Extractor. Invoices have got all the rich data that, that, that we require and that the IRD require, as opposed to a statement, which is just the summary information. Extractor or the invoice scanner also needs an attachment. Some Xero users will only send you a link. And if you forward that link on to your unique email address at scan to farm Focus it will struggle or the extractor or the invoice scanner will struggle to read it because there's only a link there and it will send you an error message. So if that happens, just ring up that supplier and say, and especially if they're zero, say hi, you know, just ask them to send a PDF copy of the invoice 
and it's just a simple tick of the box um, in Xero for them to do that. And from that point on, which you'll always get a PDF copy of the invoice attached so that extractor is able to read that. Now, please to only for the invoice and delete are there any potential doc documents attached to the invoice. For example, I get a community newsletter with my rates invoice. And if I try and send that community newsletter to Extractor, it's going to struggle to read it. So what you need to do is delete the, um, the community newsletter and only send the invoice. Now the ex Extractor or invoice scanner is designed for expenses and not income. But you can still use it for income. And I always send all my kill sheets through the invoice scanner. But it will read it as an expense. And so what you need to do is when you go into the invoices here at the top, you need to select reverse amount. And when you do this, you reverse the amount from a negative to a positive. So see how that numbers become a positive? And then all the lines in the invoice have also become a positive and then you code as per normal. But the beauty of this, of sending them through Extractor, is that you have a PDF copy of that kill sheet saved in Farm Focus that you can refer back to whenever you like. Now, if you receive an invoice by post, simply use your smartphone and scan the invoice, and then send that to your at scan to focus email address, and the invoice scanner or Extractor will read that invoice just as it would having sent an invoice from your um, email inbox. So the next way we can get invoices into Farm Focus is by uploading CSV files from other suppliers and importing those into Farm Focus. Now we at Farm Focus are working with other suppliers to deliver more connectors for you, but in the interim, this is a quick way of getting information into Farm Focus. And when invoices come directly from the supplier, you know it's the one source of truth and you'll have all that detailed information. So what you first need to do is go to your supplier's website and download the CSV file. And then, and then come here in your farm focus and your needs action screen, go up here into your file upload, click into that and you'll see supplier invoice click there. Now down here, these are a list of all the suppliers that you can use to upload CSV files from. Now in this demonstration, I'm going to choose PGG Wrightsons, and then I'm going to press browse. Now if I, and I'll be able to find that invoice under my downloads. Now if I'd just gone on to the PGG Wrightson website and downloaded the invoice CSV format, would be sitting at the top here. But I've actually done this a little bit earlier, so mine's a bit further down. I click the um, CSV file I'm interested in, and then I open that. And now you see how it's attached here, and then I want to import it into Farm Focus. And now you'll see that invoice has come through from PGG Wrightsons, and it's just sitting here ready for me to code. So another way we can get invoices into Farm Focus is we can create a tax invoice and we do that here. Now what you do to create a tax invoice is you basically populate all these fields. Now unfortunately I haven't got the time to work through that this afternoon for you, but I do know that we've got a really good help centre resource on this. Go in here into the help centre and search under tax invoice and a help centre resource will come up that will walk you through the process step by step. So the final way we can get invoices into Farm Focus is by using the plus record button here. And we do have the ability to set up these manual invoices or the plus record invoices as repeating. So I've created manual invoices for all my big expenses, say my drawings and my interest payments, and I've made them repeating. To create a manual invoice, as I said, you just clock in here, and if it's a money in manual invoice, if it's income, press money in, if it's an expenditure, money out, and then populate these fields. But what I want to draw your attention to is down here, the more options. You can create these manual invoices to be repeating, 
And to do that, go on to More Options and then select Repeat Invoice. For example, I've created a re repeating invoice for my, my drawings. So I've populated um, here with my drawings and then I press Repeat Invoice and I get the option of um, setting the frequency. So for my drawings, is I get my drawings monthly and then I repeat and I want to repeat until further notice and then I apply. And in creating these repeating invoices, it means my invoices will be created every month and appear in my needs action screen for me, ready to be coded. And this saves me time and ensures consistency. The other thing creating these manual invoices does, it allows me to take advantage of the daily bank balance, where farm focus will alert me if I'm going to exceed my overdraft. And for that to work, Farm Focus needs all to know all the invoices, incoming and outgoing, that are going to occur in the current month. So it can estimate or predetermine what your bank balance is gonna be on any particular day on the current month and alert you, of course, if you're going to exceed your overdraft. So now we've got all our invoices into Farm Focus, we need to code them. Now, coding invoices is an essential and key part of Farm Focus and ensures all our reports are meaningful and our GST return is accurate. But the first thing we should do when we code an invoice is to look at creating coding rules. And to do that, we go into our actual, so I'm going to go into an invoice now, and I'm going to demonstrate how to create a basic coding rule. So you can see here that I've got three this in this month I've bought three different product Gallagher products. Now in my business, whenever I see the word Gallagher, I know it's or repairs and maintenance, fences and yards expense. So I want to create a coding rule that whenever Farm Focus sees the word Gallagher, it automatically um, codes it to repairs and maintenance, fences and yards. To do that, I go into my line with my Gallagher and I go to my three magical dots here. I click into them and I've got these more options. This time I want to um, select new coding rule. This takes me into my new coding rule modal. On the left hand side here, I have the criteria for my coding rule. So the first line here says other party contains PGG rights. Now I want to create a coding rule whereby whenever farm focus sees the word Gallagher, it automatically codes it to R&M Fences and Yards. Now, I don't care whether it's a PGG Wrightson's um, invoice, a Farmlands, a Rural Co or a Farm Source invoice. I just want Farm Focus to automatically code when it sees the word Gallagher to R&M Fences and Yards. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to bin that line in the, my criteria. So now I've got my line description contains Gallagher ring top posts. Now, this is when I start thinking about the keywords which are gonna form the basis of my coding rule. Now, Gallagher is the keyword here in my coding rule. So I'm gonna click on here and I'm going to delete all this other information but Gallagher because I want Farm Focus to use the word Gallagher as the keyword so when it ever sees Gallagher, it will code it to R&M fences and yards. Now I'm creating a simple coding rule. So I want to code the full amount to R&M fences and yards. Now here is an important hint. You need to, or ideally you should be deleting this description here. So you retain the line description. That means you're going to retain all the information that was here in the line description. So you get that, that depth of information and then I save and apply. And when I do this, you'll find in my invoice, whenever the word Gallagher appears, it's going to be automatically coded to R&M fences and yards. And so here it is here. You can see my coding rule has worked across all of the three lines here with Gallagher. And it's kept all this rich data on my description line. Now, what's great about this is if I had another invoice in my farm focus, say from farm source, and it saw the word Gallagher, uh, when I went into that invoice, it would already be pre-coded as R&M Fences and Yards. And this coding rule will last forever. So in six months time, 
you know, whenever Farm Focus sees the word Gallagher, it's automatically going to code it for me, R&M fences and yard. Now, please don't be scared to create these coding rules because you can always overtype them if you like. For example, this Gallagher geared reel, I can pretend I brought this for my mother-in-law. So I, I want to actually code it as personal drawings. So I can actually overtype uh, the code if I wish. And I can also edit or delete my code by going into settings, codes, invoice coding rules. And here is my coding rule up here. If, and these are all my coding rules that I've got set up. Now I could also search here for my coding rule, but it's the last one I've created sitting at the top. And again, I've got my three magical dots here. I can press edit or delete if I wish, and I can edit or delete that coding rule. So Farm Focus has many other features that allow us to code our invoices efficiently, and I'm just going to demonstrate some of those now. So if I go into this Agri Services invoice, I can see that it is an invoice for a chainsaw service and sharpening. So what I want to do is I want to demonstrate how you can bulk code and invoice. And to, when you bulk, bulk code an invoice, it means you code multiple lines to the same code. So to do that, what I want to do is I want to select all the lines in this invoice. And I can do that by selecting this little square button here. When I click into here, I'm going to select all the lines in this invoice. So all eight lines are selected. And I can go up into the top line here and this R&M plant and equipment. And so now you can see all the lines here have been coded R&M plant and equipment. And then I could press save. But in this instance, I'm going to demonstrate something else for you. I want to demonstrate how we can merge our lines. Now, when we merge our lines, we combine multiple lines into a single line. And in doing so, the reports are less cluttered and easier to read. To do that, once again, I want to select all the lines in my invoice. So I select here all the lines. And again, you can see all eight lines are selected. And this time, I want to select Merge. And when I merge these lines, all eight lines are going to collapse into one. And the um, description is going to be retained for that first line here. So then I'm going to press Merge. And now you can see everything's collapsed into one. I code as per normal. So I was coding this R&M plant and equipment. The top line of the description has been uh, retained. I actually want to change that to and call it chain source service. So you can do that like there. And then if I wanted to, I could add additional note. But now everything has been collapsed up. But the beauty of this is that my invoice is still here that I can refer back to at a later date whenever I like, if I want to actually understand the full detail about my chainsaw service. So now I want to demonstrate some other features that we've got to help make your coding efficient and as effective as possible. So sometimes when you've got larger invoices, it's good to use the filter function. At the moment here, I'm filtering by all lines. Now, some suppliers have invoices that have got many lines with zero dollar lines. Um, and if you've got a supplier like that, what I would suggest you do is use the filter function to filter by zero dollar lines. And now only my zero dollar lines can be seen. And what I want to do is I want to delete all these zero dollar lines because they're actually adding no value at all. So I'm going to go in here and select all. Now all my zero dollar lines are selected. So in this instance, I'm going to select the word delete and then all my zero dollar lines will be deleted from this invoice. So boom, they've all gone. Now in this invoice, I'll go back to all lines. Ideally in an invoice, we've said that coding rules are best practice. So ideally, if you've set up coding rules, most or some of your invoice will be pre-coded. Now, if that is the case, what we would recommend you do is then sort by uncoded lines. And now my, only my uncoded lines 
are visible. And what I would do now is code all my uncoded lines as per normal. Now I've shown you earlier how you can bulk delete a whole, uh, a bulk code a whole invoice. You're actually also able to select just a number of lines within an invoice and bulk code those. So for example, both these lines here are about my dog. So I can actually select that line and select that line and you can tell, see how I've selected two lines and because it's about my dog, they're all farm working dog expenses. So I code those and now those move um, away and I'm only left with one line in my invoice that's uncoded and I know that is drench. So I'm going to um, um, code that as animal health drench. And now I've got no uncoded lines left in the invoice, so I know it's fully coded. Lines in the invoice, they haven't disappeared. If I was to put my all line code a filter on, um, they're all listed here. So in summary, to make invoice coding more efficient, you can use coding rules, you can use this filter function here, you can bulk code and you can merge. So you've got your invoices in, you've coded everything, now you want to pay your invoices and you can pay your invoices directly from Farm Focus, providing the contact details in Farm Focus include the bank account details of the party you intend to pay. So our contact details in Farm Focus are under settings and contacts. And here it lists all my um, contacts. And if I go into one of my contacts, say my country weed sprayer, and I've entered all this information. Now, if I've entered the bill payment details, it will mean that I can pay this invoice, uh, country weed sprayers from within Farm Focus. Now, this is a great function. What you need to do is you go into the bill payments tab here and you create a new batch payment. And then once you've created that batch payment, you upload it into internet banking. Now, when you do create a batch payment, it will tell you how much is going out of your account in that batch payment. So you can check whether you've got enough funds, but it also tells you the impact on your bank balance so that you know whether or not you've got the funds to pay for that um, batch. Now, I'm not going to demonstrate due to time constraints on how to create um, a batch payment, um, but there is an, a really good help centre resource on that. So go into the help centre under help and search bill payments and a resource will come up that will walk you through the process step by step. So now you've paid your invoices and the money has physically come in or out of your bank account. But because you've got bank feed set up, the transactions are going to appear automatically in your bank transaction part of your needs action screen. Now we want farm focus to mirror exactly what happens at your bank. And if you've got bank feed set up, that is exactly what will happen. And it means that you should always be balanced. Now, if you haven't got bank feed set up, we would highly recommend you do. To do that, you go into settings, bank accounts, into the bank account and scroll down and follow the process here. Now, all banks have a slightly different process, but if you have trouble at all with setting up your bank feeds, please contact our help centre. This is something that I think is, uh, you know, the most important thing to have set up if you possibly can and farm focus. So our, our customer success team would love to help you if you're having trouble setting those bank feeds up. So for the majority of these bank transactions, you should have a corresponding invoice that you want to match it, that you match. Now matching basically marries the tr bank transaction to the invoice or vice versa. Now there are a number of ways that we can match in Farm Focus, but the best practice way of matching is going into the matching tab up here. And a hot tip here is that to use the sort function here so that the oldest invoice is up the top because that's the one that you're most likely to be coding first. Now you'll see that this invoice is uncoded and that means that I cannot select that invoice. To match, the invoice needs to be coded, but you can code directly from this matching tab by going into our three little buttons here and selecting go to invoice 
and that will take you um, to where you can code that invoice. So now I'm going to go to the next most uh, likely what, um, one that I'm going to match. I want to choose in here, and I'm going to match this family trust lease payment of 23k. Now what happens in the bank transaction side is the most likely match will come to the top, which is this one. So then I select that, and you see how that lists up, so I can now match it. I can also see that the total of my invoice is the same as the total of my bank transaction, and I've got one transaction and one invoice. So I select match here, and the, this invoice and bank transaction are going to move through to my completed page. Now I can also match from my bank transactions, and it's the same process happens. I select uh, my drawings to match. The most likely drawings will come to the top. I select that to match, and again, I can check the totals are the same, and I press match, and it will go through to the completed screen. Now I can, if I want to, match one bank transaction to two invoices, or one invoice to two bank transactions, if I wish. Now the other place we can match is we can match straight from our bank transactions. So what I'm going to do is, so I'm going to match this payroll provider. I'm going to click into that. Now the most likely match has come to the top just like it did on the matching tab, although it looks slightly different. So I'm going to select here, and you can see now how it's matched. So the, um, the money is the same, there's nothing more to pay, this lit up, and I select in there and it moves through into the matching, the completed page after I press save. Now ideally, you'll only have a few transactions left um, after you've completed the matching process as you've matched all your transactions to the corresponding invoices. But there will be always some bank transactions remaining that will need to be coded. So I'm going to give that example of how I'm going to code an invoice by going into the standard monthly fee bank um, charge here. So I click into that. Now the most likely match will come to the top. And you can see there's no most likely match. Nothing like this has come to the top. So I know I don't have an invoice to match. I need to code this bank transaction. And to do that, I go into here and it says uh, close to code. I need to click on this cross button here, a monthly bank charge, so admin bank charge. And so I code it as per normal. Now I could save. But what I want to do is I always want to create a coding rule if I can. And this is a classic example of where I can create a coding rule in a bank transaction. Now this coding, creating a coding rule in a bank transaction is very similar to a coding rule on the invoice side. I go into my three magical dots here and I select new coding rule. And here is my coding rule modal. Now it's exactly the same as the invoice, except we have these additional options down here. I can choose to commit this coding rule either individually, and this means Farm Focus will apply the coding rule, but only after you click into the transaction and press save to commit to the coding rule. But you do have the option to commit as part of a group. And if you select this option, Farm Focus will automatically code all the invoices that have had as part of a group selected when you select Run Coding Rules. But only use this option if you really trust the rule. So I'm going to save and apply this coding rule. And again, because I've chosen individually, I need to um, commit to it and I'm committing to it. And so now I'm back in my bank transaction in my needs action. And what I've done is I've previously set up a coding rule which uses that as part of a group option. So in order to, for these to move into my completed screen, what I would do is then run my coding rule and these will all automatically go into my completed screen. So I'm just going to click there. I get a little bit of a warning that that's what's going to happen. And now those invoices or those bank transactions, sorry, have moved into my completed screen. Now I'm left with only one transaction here, and I've left that here for a reason, because I want to demonstrate that you actually have the ability to attach additional attachments to bank transactions if you like. And this is actually really, really handy, because 
I'm wanting to create a paperless work environment. You know, gone are the days where I print out, you know, all my invoices and all my important documentation and I file it in my um, filing cabinet and then I put it into my garage and I keep it for seven years. Now we can attach all those important documents into Farm Focus so we're creating this paperless work environment. If I have purchased a new tractor, I could attach the sale and purchase, attach the high purchase agreement. If I've got an insurance claim, I could attach pictures of the damage. But basically, you can attach as many attachments as you like to Farm Focus. So this is helping create that paperless work um, space. To do that, you just go in here and you can drag and drop additional attachments or you can browse and go and select them from your computer. So now we are just about ready to file our GST return. But before I do that, it's important that I that I first check that I've got no bank transactions or invoices for that GST period still sitting in my needs action screen. They should have all moved into my completed page. I also need to check that my farm focus balance is reconciled to my bank. Now, as I've said earlier, if you use bank feeds, if you've got bank feeds set up, you will always be balanced. But you can check that. So you go into your balancing screen here, and this green line here tells me where I'm balanced to. Now, I'm balanced to the 31st of August. Now, I can't be balanced any further because all my bank transactions need to be coded in order for me to balance. So this here needs to be coded before I will balance up um, beyond the 31st of August. Now, as I've said earlier, if you're using bank feeds, you should always be balanced. But if you ever find yourself in a situation where you're not balanced, please visit our help center down here and search under not balanced. A help center resource will walk you through the processes of the main reasons why you may not be balanced. And if you still can't work out why you're not balanced, please call our help center team. So now we're in the, the last step, we're going to file our GST return. So to create a GST return in Farm Focus, you go to reports, GST return, and go to the period of the GST return you want to create. So this return is um, from ends on the 31st of August, and I know I'm balanced up into that point, so I'm going to click into this GST return. Now I can just quickly look at that and make sure that um, those lines make sense. But what I really want to do is just double check that all my coded lines are correct in my jet form in this particular GST return. So if I click into here, this will show me all the coded lines that are associated with this GST return. And what I want to do is check that I've got the correct GST type. So I go in here and I just basically run my eye down all these coded lines and say, yep, that's all personal. Yep, that makes sense. These are all exempt. And yes, these are all my business ex expenses um, or income. And so once I've run my eye past that and I'm happy with it, I can press go into here and press save. Now I have got two options. I can press save final, and that means my GST will be finalized, but I will still need to log into the IRD website and retype the information in here to submit it to IRD. Or I could press select save final and file with IR. And what that means is that my GST is automatically filed with the IRD and I don't have to do anything more except remember to pay my GST. So before I finish up, I just want to show you a few more things on the actual page. So we've talked about the needs action page and the matching page. We haven't yet talked about the completed page. I'm going to come back to that shortly. We've got our stock activity tab or page here. And when I click into it, this shows me my stock movements for the financial year to date. We've got our bill payments, which we've already talked about. Now here, the tax invoice tab. This is where if I'd created any tax invoices, they'd be sitting so I can view them later. Here under repeating, this is where all my repeating manual invoices would be stored if I'd created any, and I can um, delete them from in here. And we've also already covered the balancing tab.
So let's come back to completed. So there are two views in the completed tab. You've got your transaction view, and that's like what, so if you made, this is your basically your transactions. So this is your one payment you made to say farmlands, whereas in the coded line view, these are basically all the lines in your farmlands invoice. Well, in the transaction page, this is where we'd go to check if we'd paid an invoice, or probably more importantly, we would go to find an historical invoice we were looking for. So say I purchased my tractor, and in five years' time, I wanted to go and find the invoice associated with that tractor. So what I could do here is I could go, if I knew what financial year I'd purchased that tractor in, I could select it here. If I wasn't exactly sure of exactly what financial year, I could create a customised date range of when I thought I'd purchased that tractor. I can then use my search function here and say search. So if it was, say, a John Deere tract, I could write John Deere. And then um, any time John Deere was written here, those transactions um, would be shown. I also have the uh, um, ability to sort by other party. So if I knew who I'd purchased my John Deere tractor from, I could, you know, say I'd purchased it from the garage, I could go in here and find that transaction there. Now, I'm also interested in going into my coded lines because this is where I can, um, I go in here quite regularly just to check that my, I've coded things consistently. And to do that, I sort by my coded lines and then I just make sure I'm consistently coding things. And so, for example, I can change my codes right here in my coded line list and I can change these whenever I like as long as I don't change the GST type, say from personal uh, to business. So you can change all your coding line, how you've coded things retrospectively. So for example, this actually isn't a use, uh, expense. It was actually a tractor expense. I can just simply change my code there and now it's become a tractor expense. So again, I'll just demonstrate. I can change that from vehicle ute to vehicle tractor and now it's moved down as a tractor expense. So that's about um, all for this afternoon. Thank you for your time.